What manner of man is this R. M. Renfield? Successful solicitor in the firm Hawkins and Tompkins, respected member of the Lord Nugent's Wind and Club, returns from business abroad from Transylvania, promptly suffers a complete mental breakdown. He's now obsessed with some sort of bloodlust. He has certain qualities very largely developed, selfishness, secrecy, and purpose. I wish I could get at what is the object of the latter. He seems to have some settled scheme of his own. What it is, I do not know yet. His one redeeming quality is his love of animals, though indeed he has such curious turns in it, I sometimes think he is only abnormally cruel. His pets are of odd sorts. Just now his hobby is catching flies. You care for an old dab, Dr. Seward, or a canapé, perhaps? No, thank you, Mr. Renfield. How are you feeling tonight? A lot better than you, my lovesick doctor. Is my personal life of interest to you? Of course it is. All life is of interest to me. Your diet, Mr. Renfield, is disgusting. Actually, they're perfectly nutritious. Each life I ingest gives more life to me. The fly gives you life. Certainly. You may as well ask man to eat molecules with a pair of chopsticks and to interest me in the lesser carnivore. We shall have to invent a new classification of lunatic for you. What about spiders? Spiders eat flies. Yes. Spiders eat them. What about sparrows? Oh, yes. Did you say sparrows? Something larger, perhaps. Oh, yes. A kitten. A playful kitten. Something I could teach, something I could feed. No one would refuse me a kitten. What about a cat? Oh, yes. A cat. A big cat. My salvation depends upon it. Your salvation? I need lives, you see. Lives for the master. Master? What master? Master is coming. He has promised to make me immortal. How? <laughs> before we are not to use violence against our patients. Even when they use violence against us. That is what makes the difference between them and us, Mr. Withers. The attack to Dr. Seward. Yeah, look, he's drawn blood. He appears calm enough now. Don't let that fool you, Dr. Seward. There's murder in his heart, sure enough. Cut out our throats if he could. Renfield. Renfield, what are you doing? Blood, blood is life. Oh, God, he's taking the blood off his fingers. He's an animal, that's what he is. No, he's not, Mr. Bennett. He's all too human. And that's the tragedy of it. You two can go now. I'll stay with him for a while. You be careful, Dr. Seward. This storm's got more wound up. He's drawn blood. Given the chance, he's likely to do it again. I'll take care. We won't be far if he needs us. I gave Renfield a strong opiate that night, enough to make even him sleep. The case of Renfield grew more interesting each day. He requested sugar to lay in small piles about his cell, which he used to attract flies, and a small box in which to keep them. I saw no reason to deny his request. Indeed, I was quite eager to allow it, 
in order that I should observe it and see in what direction it might lead. Filled with life. The box is full. They can take no more. What will you do with them? You'll wait and see. Hold this. Don't let them out. Feast well and grow so fat. You see? Needless to say, I did not. But daily I observed him gripped in the mania of each new obsession, as eager as he was to follow it through to its ultimate end. Life is blood, and blood is life. What's that you say? Life is blood, and blood is life. Spiders eat flies and birds eat spiders. And here's a whole box full. A box full of fat spiders for the bird to feast on. They shall grow so fat. So fat of blood and life. So at last, I began to glimpse some reason and progression in his mania. From spiders, he moved on to birds capturing several sparrows while outside exercising in the yard, which he then took back to his cell. And a right mess they've made of it as well. Filth and droppings everywhere. You sure it's healthy to let him keep them in here, Dr. Seward? I'm sure it won't last much longer, Mr. Bennett. I've been observing each new obsession of <laughs> Oh my God! You animal! You filthy, stinking animal! What is it, Mr. Bennett? What's wrong? Him! That's what's wrong. You see what he's doing? He's just eating one of them blessed birds. Didn't even kill it. He's just stuffed it into his mouth and he's eating it alive and raw. No harm, eh, Dr. Seward? You ask me, there's nothing but harm in this one. He's a creature full of harm and wickedness if I've seen it in any living soul. Best get this place cleared of these birds, Dr. Seward. If you don't, you'd soon have it cleared for us. <coughs> he took the birds away, to which he made most violent objection. He sank into a morbid, depressed state uncommunicative, except for repeating over and over his prayer-like chant. Life is blood, and blood is life. Life is blood, and blood is life. Life is blood, and blood is life. There was a terrible storm. The night watchman sent up to me from the ward to say that Renfield had escaped. I threw on my clothes immediately and ran down. The patient is too dangerous a man to be roaming about. The attendant was waiting for me. He said he had seen Renfield not ten minutes before, apparently asleep in his cell, when he had looked through the observation trap in the door. His attention had been called by the sound of the window being wrenched out. He ran back and saw Renfield's feet escape through the window and had immediately sent up for me. The attendant thought it best to watch where the patient should go rather than to follow him as he might lose sight of him while he was trying to get out of the building by the door. The attendant told me the patient had gone left and taken a straight line, so I ran as fast as I could. As I got through the belt of trees, I could see a white figure scale the high wall which separates our grounds from those of the deserted house. I ran back immediately, told the attendant to get two or three men and follow me directly into the ground of Carfax, in case our friend might be dangerous just see Renfield's figure disappear behind the angle of the house, so I ran after him. Far side of the house, I found him pressed up against the old iron-bound oak door of the chapel. He was talking, apparently to someone, but I was afraid to go near enough to hear what he was saying, lest I might frighten him and he should run off again. When we closed in on him, he fought like a tiger. He is immensely strong more like a wild beast than a man. I 
never saw a lunatic in such a paroxysm of rage before. I hope I shall not again. It is coming! 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 